would like to now uh, show you our um, a demonstration of uh, NanoTracker as well as an experiment. So what you see here in our Berlin demo lab, we have, so I would like to start from the bottom. So we have a controller, which is used to control all the electronics that we have in the system, as well as uh, it, it is communicating uh, continu continuously with the computer um, to, to record your data or store your data as well. On the top of the controller, which is this one, uh, we have a laser, laser box, which is a laser power supply box, uh, to, uh, uh, which the laser sits on, on, on our laser steering unit, which is right here. And we have different optical elements inside here to, to basically uh, create multiple traps as well as to steer or modulate your traps. Then the light is guided uh, through an um, optical path here onto our microscope head, which is on the top of an inverted microscope. You could see here a, a size microscope. Um, and then um, the light is basically guided through a, a 45, so a dichroic mirror, which is placed at 45 degree angle. And then the light passes through a high numerical aperture objective. At the moment, I have already loaded a sample with a laminar flow cells. Um, otherwise, I could have shown you opening the laser uh, laser box. Um, but uh, the idea is you tightly focus your laser light, trap a particle, and then you have another detection objective to detect the detect the position or or, or the forces of the particle uh, with using quadrant photodiode. So the method that we are using to detect the forces as well as the position of the particle is called back focal plane interferometry. Um, and we use it uh, quadrant photodiodes, which are inside the laser box. Uh, with this description, I would like to show you uh, a small experiment where we will use, um, uh, I have previously already cached a DNA, hopefully it works here. So this is how our, um, there's a nano tracker software looks like. So. On the left-hand side, you could see the functions where you could set up your laser power, uh, as well as we have two traps here, so we could distribute the power, how much you power you want in each, each trap, as well as there are some attenuation filter right before the detections, so that you don't want your uh, detection to be oversaturated, and you could use one of the filters. Um, then we have a window where we could uh, use um, detection objective or as well as uh, trapping objective to move and then uh, go into the focus plane and trap some particles. Moreover, we also have motorized sample states. So you could see it on here, um, which you could move it uh, for, let's say, a couple of centimeters. But if you want to have a very precise movement of your samples, we also support some nano positioning um, sample states which you could use it to um, move it in all three directions, X, Y, Z, up to 100 micrometer. Um, then we also have, let's say, uh, different functionality. One functionality that I would like to show is it, it's called force spectrometry because we want to uh, stretch our DNA and then measure the forces acting on it, right? So that, the function that you have um, is called force spectrometer that I could show you here. But before that, you all, or let's say the people who are not aware that before measuring the forces, you need to calibrate your optical tweezers. And to calibrate optical tweezers, we use power spectrometer. Um, and all you need here, so you could set up the diameter of the particle that you are using, temperature, as well as the density and the uh, and the viscosity of the medium in which the beads are are trapped. So here on the right hand side, you could see in the camera there are two particles trapped. One is at let's say this is trap two, and this, we call it trap one. Trap two here is a static trap, and I will move trap one and then record the forces. So let's first for both trap, I would I would first calibrate it. So this is how uh, typically a uh, power spectrum for a trap bit looks like. You could see the green region is basically the region where you are fitting it with a Lorentzian function. You could select different region to, to have a very good fit. Um, 
um, and then all your calibra uh, the calibrations, you could see the values of sensitivity as well as the stiffness of the trap. Once your, uh, once your trap is calibrated, you could uh, start your experiment basically doing uh, uh, a force spectrometry measurement. So 